finished registering, will you please come and take your seat so that we may begin our program? This tends to be a busy day for that and there are many things that um, some people are involved in, so we do need to get started. A few years ago, I had the privilege to travel to Ireland, which is the home of some of my ancestors. And in Ireland, on ne nearly every front door, there's a door knocker. And it's engraved with a phrase that translated from the Gaelic reads, Welcome, a hundred thousand welcomes. Today, on behalf of the faculty, the staff, the administration, students and alumni, I say to you, welcome a hundred thousand welcomes. The planners of this event envision a sunshiny day, nice spring weather, <laughs> but they envisioned a day which would celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Associate Degree Nursing Program. And some of us who lived through that remember many of those years as the golden years of nursing, when it was fun to be a nurse. <laughs> many faculty, including nursing and general education members, are here to greet you and to share in the many stories of your time at Baytown and in the events which occurred afterwards and I'm sure you're all going to get together with one another and talk about those things. No matter where else you landed in your quest for additional information, additional specialties, certificates, or degrees, your heart, as mine, will always have a fondness for your first nursing education program. Some 1,584 invitations were mailed to Bacon graduates announcing this event. Many alums were unable to attend for various reasons. 75 are deceased. Others are ill, unable to travel, or working in critical positions and could not get the day off to attend. For those of you who are here today, hundred thousand welcomes. Isn't it great to renew old friendships and to catch up with the events which shaped your life and the lives of your friends? Today you are invited to stay after the program for refreshments, uh, sort of light lunch, and visiting with your fellow classmates. And that will be behind us, behind those low walls. Comfort stations, if you haven't found them yet, are located in the southwest corner of this building. And if you're not familiar with directions, and some people are challenged that way, it's in that far corner of the building. <clears throat> if you have not registered, please take a few minutes following the program to register and to update your information. It, Linda Frederick spent a great deal of time, as did Ann Ong, trying to locate many of you because since you graduated, some of you got married several times, changed your name. Um, <laughs> nowadays, I think people just live together, but there was a time that morally, we got married before we did certain things. But, Anyhow, we would like you to update your personal information. According to the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer, it affirms that this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A graduate of the class of 1977, Mr. Jim Murphy, will now bring our invocation. Emily Dickinson once said, I live in possibility. And by choosing the nursing profession, we have chosen to live in possibility. 
Let each one of us gather here today, acknowledge the courage that it took for each of us to take that first step to achieving the possibility that we have in life. Also, let us to continue to live in possibility with dedication and enthusiasm. Will you please stand for a moment of prayer? Dear Lord, we acknowledge you as our Heavenly Father. We thank you for this institution, its founders, and its leaders. We give thanks to you, Father, for giving those present safe passage here and ask that you be with those who are unable to attend today and welcome into your kingdom those who are no longer with us. We give thanks to you, Father, for giving us the possibility and the opportunity to attend this institution and to achieve our goal of service through others and our chosen profession. Thank you for instilling in us the desire to care for, help, and heal those whose minds and bodies are in need. Dear Lord, as we celebrate the 50 years of nursing education at this institution and the nurses it has produced, let us continue to realize our goals and to inspire others to pursue this noble calling. We ask in his name. Amen. Robert J. Duncan came to Bacon Cone College some 10 years ago and to serve the college as president. He was the first graduate of the Theological School of Drew University in Madison, New Jersey. Dr. Duncan brings that background in Christian principles to enrich and to lead this college. Dr. Duncan will bring greetings from the office of the president. My pleasure to greet you here to the new Ginny Palmer Student Life Center and our new athletic field house and to extend those greetings to you on behalf of our Board of Trustees. I'm pleased to uh, indicate to you that the current chair of our Board of Trustees, Ken Adams, Chief of the Upper Mattapani Tribe in Virginia, is here with us today. Ken, could you stand up so we can greet you? Also, would like to recognize our immediate past chair of the board, who is a board member emeriti and has provided support for this event today, uh, Dr. Ann Um. <laughs> days like this are exciting days, and um, they are days that are filled with a variety of different emotions as we come back to greet one another after years of service. It's a time where we take a moment to thank those who have come. The board members who were part of this tradition of nursing here at Bacon College, the faculty who provided such quality leadership and have dedicated themselves to the Christian principles of the institution, as well as the needs of the students, and to the students who are our alum who represent this institution, not in a job, but rather in a vocation, and provide service to others from that very principle. It's a bittersweet day for us because in a very real sense, we are closing one program and graduating a final group uh, from a nursing program. But it is not the end. I would prefer rather to say it is a restart. And Bacon has done that over the years. Starting as Indian University in Tahlequah, it came here to Muskogee with land donated by the Muskogee Creek Nation and it was a restart. Indian University became Bacon College, and it was a restart. There was a period of time where a need was designed for nursing, and a nursing program was developed that was a distinctive program because it was the first program that took place in the academy here in Oklahoma, rather than the hospital setting. And so we have been about the task of looking at an ancient future lens to look back to understand where we're going. And the distinctiveness of the current program had been the cutting edge that it defined by bringing nursing to the academy. And you'll hear today about our new program, our Bachelor of Science in Nursing, an online degree completion program that also is a cutting edge program. 
offering asynchronous education for busy nurses and micro lectures that fit their schedule and does not require them to leave their family after long hours of service, but can find ways to integrate their learning into their service. And you'll also hear about synchronous education opportunities with video conferencing so that it is not a, a glorified or digital correspondence course. It truly is an interactive experience with the possibility of even making presentations to one another over distance. It's an opportunity for us to redefine, once again, from Bacon College, nursing education in America. It's also a way for us to better serve our tribal partners across the nation, and you'll hear about some of those partnerships today as some of our speakers bring that information. And as I close my greeting remarks, I am in a position of making two exciting announcements following our Board of Trustees meeting. The Board has approved a new roof for the Harmon Building and has approved the use of funds to refit some of our nursing areas for facilities to better prepare nurses, nursing faculty to teach our nurses online. So it has been a busy weekend for us. We've had many receptions for students who are graduating, receptions for students who are completing their spring sports. We've welcomed our trustees here. We've welcomed the honorary degree recipients here. But we are most excited to welcome you, the alumni to the nursing program here. I hope this will be a meaningful day to you, and I welcome you on behalf of the entire institution. Thank you. In the late 1950s, the two schools of nursing in Muskogee were closing. The Baptist Hospital School of Nursing transferred its last class to Oklahoma City to their new Baptist Hospital to finish their, their last year of uh, nurses training, we called it back then. <clears throat> I've hated that word ever since my husband said to me, yes, and you're still in training. And so I try not to use that. And that hospital ceased operation in Muskogee. Soon afterward, um, the Muskogee General Hospital School of Nursing, which began in 1928 under the directorship of Miss Edna Rockefeller, the street in front of the hospital is named in her honor, cl uh, closed its program. This three-year program prepared nurses to become eligible for registered nurse licensure. Although the hospital closed its diploma program, it did begin and maintain a program for licensed practical nurses that was hospital-based and then later moved to the Indian Capital Vocational Technical School. The city was in dire need of nursing leadership and couldn't recruit sufficient numbers of registered nurses from Tulsa or the Oklahoma City area. In addition, Muskogee General Hospital built a new hospital, increasing the hospital beds and increasing the nursing shortage in Muskogee. A citizens committee of Muskogee formed in 1959 turned to Bacon College for help. And Lenny is sitting there, and she, her husband, was part of all of this. They had heard of a new concept in nursing education, a two-year nursing program, which was college-based and managed rather than hospital-based and managed, and could be completed in two years. They requested the administration of the college to help in their critical need by beginning this type of program. Dr. Roger Getz, President, and Dean Leo Harmon read Dr. Mildred Montag's book, The Education of Nursing Technicians. And with much prayer and even more trepidation, they decided to begin this innovative program in Oklahoma. This was the first of its kind in the state. The Board of Nursing and Nursing Education had not defined or written rules that would take care of the administrative needs and the faculty needs of this kind of program. Nurses in the community were very threatened by these college trained nurses.
some nurses refuse to work with them, and I know there are those of you in the audience who remember that day. Some nurses, uh, after a meeting with local nurses, Dean Harmon related that he thought he was going to be tarred and feathered and run out of the city on a rail. Um, apparently it was not a very pleasant meeting. After the program garnered some acceptance in the community, it had to meet the needs of the Board of Nursing. Again, there were unwritten rules to follow. The board had not kept up with innovations and the only two-year programs in existence were pilot programs and no one knew for sure whether these were going to accomplish their goals or not. So, questions. Was this new program to be modeled after the four-year BSN or the three-year diploma program? Clearly, it was neither. What should be the credentials of the faculty? How many credits or classes should these students take? Who had control of the students in the hospital? The hospital didn't own the program, and the college didn't own the hospital, so who would manage these students? According to Dean Harmon, the State Board of Nursing was very obstructive. He met with other deans in the state and they got some help with the senator from McAllister and who introduced a bill in the legislature to abolish the Board of Nursing. No, if they're not going to work with you, let's just get rid of them. Well, it was more a threat because nursing couldn't survive without someone looking over and making sure that licensure needs were met and whatnot. The bill failed. However, the Board of Nursing revised their rules and regulations to accommodate two-year IDN programs. Not only that, they decided they'd provide consultation to Bacon. And so, the first class was admitted in 1963. Would you stand, first class? first class to share some experiences and obstacles that they encountered as members of that class. Peggy Parsons and Beerman Davis will come share with us. First I'd like to correct a, a more recent error that's been committed. We have Marty Moydell here and she's listed in your directory as deceased. Marty would you please stand up? <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> well, you have this listed as uh, the real Pathfinders. I really think the real Pathfinders is Bacon College. They set it up. We found the path and we set the pace. Our first class set the pace for all the other classes. We graduated at 100% and we had a good time doing it. Now the instructors might give you a different story, but don't listen to them. You only have to listen to them if you're being graded. So, uh, but I, I think that a pace setter is someone that goes out and tests out the program, makes sure that it's good for those that's going to follow you, and make changes as you need. <coughs> but I really give the credit to Bacon and to the local community for setting this up for us. Those of us that lived in the community, we're so happy it was right here at home that we didn't have to travel to get our education. And I had a one-upsmanship on most of my classmates because I was an already, already an LPN and I was already working at the Muskogee General Hospital. So the nurses didn't look down on me as a two-year stu student at, like they did on some of the others because, you know, they worked hard for three years to go to school and then here comes these two-year grads coming in and and but we proved that we were what was needed in the hospitals and we continue to prove that and many of our grads have gone on to higher and better positions and teachers some of them have come back and taught in this school so I won't 
some of the things that will happen in our class probably shouldn't be told in this big of an audience because I'm not sure all who all speak. <laughs> but anyway, Beerman will probably do that. I don't have to. Uh, come on up, Beerman. I'm I am Beerman Davis, and I am the one that was in the first class that uh, has been talked about and we've met today to say to say that we were plowing new ground may be the understatement of the century at that time. Uh, and to compound matters, when they brought uh, Lynn Jones and a Beerman Davis aboard, we were really placing that class under a handicap. Lynn, this is uh, my partner in crime over here. Lynn, stand up and take a bow. And I became, uh, I would call us great friends when we were in training and uh, we remain so today. Uh, before Peggy gets plumb out of sight, I want to acknowledge the tremendous effort that she has put forth in making this possible for us today. Let's give her an addition. She may want to recognize some of the committee uh, personnel that assisted her in that endeavor at a, later on. And, and I'm reminded by our class that uh, we and possibly the other classes are uh, instructed as soon as this is over to uh, assemble for pictures. Uh, some of the difficulties that happened as we entered this class, uh, I wish Rebecca Lowe and Captain Bazemore could see today what has happened. Uh, we genuinely love those two individuals and the contributions they made in sending this off are just, were just enormous. Uh, Captain Bazemore was, was a disabled military veteran. He was a registered nurse, obviously, and uh, he was originally a Navy SEAL and was injured in an underwater demolition accident that took his limbs, and he did suffer enormous pain before he finally died. In fact, he, he passed away a couple of three years after we got out of class. I've not tried to stay up with his, with his wife, but I was a Paul Bear and I sent assisted her in uh, you know, the, the last efforts for him. Uh, Lynn and I were totally elective as to the attire that we as nursing students would have. Mrs. Loaf and the, the personnel and the women all got together and designed their uh, apparel. And Lynn and I, uh, by virtue of the fact that we were good friends with Captain Bazemore, elected to go with kind of a khaki military yet uh, official look and when we went to the hospital uh, we were greeted with mixed emotions over there uh, they were as as has already been stated the ladies that were in charge at all stations were product and graduates of the uh, recently finished uh, baptist hospital and you just could not be a nurse going to a college you had you know had to have been there and lynn and i i guess uh, Lynn was good natured, and I hope I was as good a natured then as I thought it was, but they asked us to do anything that you can mention, from plunging toilet stools to, I, unfortunately, I made the mistake of letting them know that I knew what a pair of pliers and an oil can was, and, and if there was a squeaky wheelchair or a pair of bed rails or something anywhere, and after we would finish our clinical experience at the hospital many, many times, well, the, the class then would come back here to the campus for the academic portion of our days. And I'd be late, 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 and I'd, I'd show up, and, and I'd say, well, so-and-so had me doing this, and so-and-so had me doing that, and, uh, and they, Lynn Wright, <laughs> they, they thought that we were an expansion of the maintenance program over at the Stoker <laughs> General, General Hospital. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to name this lady, but she, she was a, a real great friend of mine later on, but not when we was in training. My mother had an acute attack of appendicitis, and uh, Dr. Gaston, some of you remember the wonderful surgeon that he was, and availing myself of the uh, friendship that I had made with Dr. Gaston when we was here, I called and I said, my mother, I, said, I, I know she's having an appendicitis attack, and he said, well, get her over here, we'll take care of her. And so she did, in fact, her appendix ruptured, and she had a lengthy stay here in the hospital. And I was walking by this uh, nurse patient one day, and this dear Baptist lady, by the way, my wife and I are Baptist, 
So uh, I, I have nothing against the uh, Baptist lineage. Uh, uh, what was here as uh, the, the nurses that uh, we were dealing with, and she said, Davis, she said, I owe you an apology. She said, come in here, I want to talk to you. I was there visiting my mother. Two or three years or maybe four after uh, we had graduated. She said, Davis, she said, I owe you an apology because she said, I did everything I could to run you off. And she said, she said, I made life miserable for you. And she said, it was on purpose. But she said, you never sassed us back. And Liam did need, I can testify to that. She said, you took everything we had to deal with. And she said, when she was in nurse training, there was one male attempted the deal and he kind of rotted out some way. Uh, didn't last through the program. And she said, I made the remark that women preachers and male nurses belong in the same category. And she said, as long as I was around here, we were not going to have any male nurses come through here. <laughs> On a little more, more of a serious note, uh, let me announce to you that I did take my education very, very serious. I have been in the nursing home profession for many, many years where my wife and I are retired now. But the threshold of everything I stood for, and I was on the board of directors and eventually the president of the Oklahoma Nursing Home Association, 84, 85, and 86. But I stood for education. Uh, and I was uh, on the state board of nursing home examiners, and I was chairman of the education committee, which dealt with the training and recertification of nursing homes, nursing home administrators throughout the state. And uh, I took that job very seriously. Uh, I, I believe that uh, certainly that the more prepared you can have an industry, and in our particular case, it was long-term care, and we did it through education, that that was a, a gap that we definitely need to fulfill and take care of. And that was one thing that I stood, stood for when I was there, and hopefully I got my training and my roots and my bearing here at Bacon College. Uh, with that, I'm just simply going to say it's, it's wonderful to be here today and have an opportunity to see old friends. And I hope to meet more of you as new friends before we uh, leave here today. When I prepared this program, I confused two words, approval and accreditation. Now, to some of you, that might not mean a whole lot, but it does in the terms of nursing. And so, I'm sure this is the first mistake I ever made. <laughs> it may not be the last. <laughs> but to speak to you today about nursing program approval is Catherine York White, who came here with a brand new master's degree to work in this two-year program. Catherine? This is truly an honor and a delight to uh, see old faces. And uh, it, it's a tradition that uh, will live long in many of our memories. I do also want to thank the members of the committee that have worked so hard and so long to put this event together. They are to be commended. <coughs> Oklahoma State Board of Nursing Registration and Nursing Education Approval. That was the long title that uh, oversaw nursing education in the state. There are two types of official recognition for all types of nursing programs. One type of recognition is mandatory and one is voluntary. The mandatory recognition is approval so that graduates from the respective program are eligible to take the licensure exam while accreditation is a voluntary process the definition of approval is to have favorable regard and commendation to consider something right and good and denote official consent it also means to invest officially with legal authority 
Macon College received both types of recognition, but approval from the board was necessary in order to open a school of nursing in this state. Approval by the Oklahoma State Board of Nursing and Nursing Education was obtained for the Bay Home program in 1963. That was under the leadership of Mrs. Rebecca Loaf, the first director of the program. I was 24 years of age when I graduated from Columbia University Teachers College in New York City. And I came to Bay Home in January 1965. At Columbia, I had received a master's degree in nursing education with a double major, administration of an associate degree nursing program, along with a dual clinical major, fundamentals of nursing and maternal and child health. My academic advisor was none other than Dr. Mildred Montague, whose doctoral dissertation produced the pilot project of the idea of a two-year nursing program in a college setting. I'll have to digress a little from this and tell you that Dr. Montag died three years ago at the age of 99 in Arizona. And she was the size of Billy Tower. And it was through Dr. Montag that I was able to go to Columbia. Scholarship, full scholarship that Dr. Montag provided for me. I swore I would never go for a master's degree because I was terrified of having to write a master's thesis. But there were so many, so many nurses with baccalaureate degrees that were drawn to Columbia, they didn't have time to have the master's degree students in the associate degree prepared program to write a thesis. We just had to write two professional papers. <laughs> Don't tell me that's not a god job. <laughs> Dr. Montag stood about my shoulder so, and put her finger shortly under my nose and she said, Catherine, you will never know all the things that I have done for you. You must pass it on. And I'm glad to say I was privileged to pass it on here at this school. In 1958, as a result of her dissertation, the Kellogg Foundation funded the implementation of the project at seven pilot sites in four states. At that time, most schools of nursing were three-year diploma programs located in hospitals being owned and operated by the hospital. I'm a graduate from a diploma program from Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And our curriculum was three calendar years, no credits, but we got graded and moved on from course to course. And um, <laughs> that was a god job that I got through there too. <laughs> At that time, most schools of nursing, uh, I, I said the hospitals owned and operated, and that's true. If the hospital didn't have a school of nursing, the hospital would not stay open. We students staffed that evenings, weekends, nights, holidays, the whole nine yards. In her dissertation, Montag proposed creating this two-year nursing program in an academic setting, whether it was a community college or a junior college, in order to prepare technical nurses to assist the professional nurse. And she envisioned this professional nurse as one having a baccalaureate degree. Her goal was to alleviate the critical shortage of nurses by decreasing the length of the educational process while providing a sound educational base for nursing education. The benefits of the program would allow the graduate to obtain an associate degree, be reasonable in cost because of the proximity of the program to the community, and allow for a diverse student population which included adult learners or what we call non-traditional students, along with minority students, male students, and married students. The traditional diploma program only accepted female students, unmarried, ages 17 to 35. And if you got married and it was found out by the authorities, you were dismissed immediately. We had one graduate, Maddie Herndon, who drove every day from Venita, 90 miles one way, 
to come to this school. And she did well in her academics, too. Seven community colleges were included in this five-year nursing research project between the years of 1958 and 1963. This was to evaluate the impact of an associate degree nursing education to be accomplished in two years. Bacon College was not one of the seven pilot settings, but Bacon began its program at the same time the other pilot sites were in operation. The success of this radically new approach to educating students to become RNs was phenomenal. The number of associate degree programs increased from seven in 1958 to, nine, to 868 in 1994. I don't know the exact number of programs uh, nationwide for 2012 or 2013, but it's well over 800 for sure. The success of the programs was determined by a first-time success pass rate on the State Board of Nursing licensure exam. The national licensure pass rate for the three types of nursing programs for 1960, 1996 and 97 was 85% success rate for the associate degree graduate, 90% success rate for the diploma graduate, and 85% success rate for the baccalaureate. Bacon's pass rate for the first class of 14 graduate nurses was 100%. God job? Uh, yes. One graduate, Ms. Kay Cowan, scored higher than any other graduate from any other nursing program in Oklahoma, even the Diploma and Baccalaureate. Bacon College received approval from the board in 1963 in order to start the program and the community, the college, and the nursing profession in Oklahoma took a great risk in establishing such a new type of nursing education. To obtain approval was a gigantic challenge for Mrs. Lowe. In fact, I'll tell you an anecdotal situation. When I got off the plane, Dr. Getz and his wife came and met me, brought me to Journey Cape Hall, and I lived in Journey Cape Hall for uh, my initial stay. But none of my luggage came. And Mrs. Lope literally gave me a pair of her shoes and I walked in her shoes for six weeks. <laughs> she prepared the curriculum, found suitable clinical facilities within reasonable driving distance, and hired faculty who had degrees comparable to other non-nursing faculty. And attempts to recruit prepared faculty <coughs> ones with comparable uh, degrees to other non-nursing college faculty was very difficult. To find faculty, to pay them competitive wages, and to attract them to Muskogee were three near impossibilities if this new program in its infancy could survive. There was considerable opposition. The word threatened was used in an earlier person's uh, presentation. I can tell you it was threatened, yeah. There was considerable opposition from diploma prepared nurses and hospital administrators in the community in not knowing how to relate to associate degree nursing prepared graduates. How would they do in the clinical area? Montag had envisioned the associate degree prepared nurse as a technical nurse doing direct bedside patient care under the direction of a professional baccalaureate prepared nurse. But there just were not enough professional nurses, ones with this baccalaureate degree, in Muskogee, and so the associate degree nurse took on professional nursing skills with astonishing confidence, out of necessity, and very quickly. The graduates have proven themselves over the years to be what was needed to meet the nursing needs in Muskogee and in surrounding areas with just their associate degree. Many graduates, however, over the years have pursued additional degrees, reaching the BSN, Master's, and even the doctorate level. Fifty years ago, Bacon College was granted state approval for its program to begin a new type of nursing education, which implemented a curriculum designed to provide academic excellence, gradually gain community support, and create a remarkable reputation of being outstanding. Truly, this program and its long tenure is a true example 
of God's divine interventions, too numerous to mention, so very inspiring to recall, and for each of them, I give him the praise and the glory. Thank you. Catherine did not mention the curriculum changes made under her service as director, and mainly made by her, as the faculty did not have the expertise to redesign this program. The curriculum took a more holistic approach to nursing care. Some examples of this are, there were two courses, physical illness and mental illness, and Catherine combined concepts from those to produce a course called physical and mental illness, asserting that you can't separate the mind from the body when it comes to um, a human being. Another example was OB and Pete's, how do you separate the baby from the mother? And so that course became a combined, a combined course. I did not realize until much later the amount of planning and organization that goes into the development of curriculum. And those of you who have not taught have no idea of the integration and organization that this requires. Other directors followed Catherine at the helm. These included Renee West, who could not be here. She has some health issues. Sister Mary Sean and Billy Tower. The program grew and ran out of space in the Samuel Richards building. After Billy Tower assumed the director position and with the help of others, wrote many proposals for the benefit of the program. So Billy will tell us about a growing program. teaching all the time. 
and I would like the faculty who work with me to please stand. Because I appreciate you.
you, Marlene. Uh, I came in 1994, and while Billy Tower may have retired, she definitely was my mentor for the, the first, I would say, five years. So she was around a lot of that. that. But the, talking about offering a baccalaureate program, as Marlene mentioned, actually officially began in 1997 when our college administration began talking about, once again, offering bachelor degrees. And those talks turned into action when the administration and the college department heads started burning the midnight oil as they prepared one of the self-studies for continued ed education and accreditation with North Central. At the same time, they requested permission to offer selected baccalaureate degrees. NCA did their site visit in the spring of 1999 and the decision by the site visitors was that they would recommend to their formal body, the former bo formal body, excuse me, North Central, that they can be allowed to offer selected baccalaureate degrees. Thus, our initial step in planning a BSN program began. The initial phase involved reviewing compiled data and planning for the BSN program. We looked at data from the Oklahoma Board of Nursing that they had collected, and it illustrated that the number of associate degree prepared registered nurses in the state outnumbered bachelor degree registered nurses by three and a half to one. The number increased to five to one when we looked at the counties in East Central Oklahoma. So using these results then, in the summer of 1999, a needs assessment was done of alumni, current students, as well as our area healthcare facilities employees and employers and nurses. Surveys were sent to facilities in Muskogee, Tahlequah, McAllister, Wagner, Okmogee, and then the Tulsa area. Results of the survey verified that the need for the number of associate registered nurses working in area facilities was indeed high. A large number, 76% in our survey, were interested in furthering their education and that their employing agencies, while uncertain if they could provide financial assistance, would certainly were in favor of the nurses obtaining a Bachelor of Nursing degree. At that time, Macon had offered its associate degree in nursing for over 38 years. So the desire then to offer our alumni, our graduates, and other area associate prepared nurses the opportunity to continue their nursing education was overwhelmingly supported. So with the survey results and the formal approval from North Central that they could indeed offer these baccalaureate degrees, curriculum planning began in earnest in the fall of 1999. In an attempt then to competitively attract students and at the same time be aligned with the current trends in nursing education, our decision was made to offer the nursing courses in an accelerated format or rapid transit as it's called here at Bacone with the formal nursing classes meeting once a week over a 15-month period. This then would allow the nurses, who most of them were, were working full-time at their facilities, could come one night a week, and classes generally began at 9, nine at night, went till about 9.30. Um, the length of each course ranged from four weeks to seven weeks, and it depended upon the course content. The courses that were planned or designed in addition to being the, the typical courses that were taught in a baccalaureate program. We had some very unique courses at that time that were um, definitely unique to a lot of the bachelor programs around. We offered transcultural nursing, gerontology, disability, and rehabilitation care, as well as healthcare economics. Following then two and a half years of planning, the first BSN class began in February of 2001. A second cohort began in June of 2001. Because our associate degree program was accredited by the National League for Nursing, it was natural then for us to seek accreditation with that same organization. So our initial site visit then occurred in February of 2002. And formal accreditation was granted in, on July 17th of 2002. So at that time, you didn't ask or seek for accreditation site visit until the semester just before your first group was going to graduate. 
and then you hoped and prayed that you would be approved and get accredited, and then our graduates were retroactively accredited. They don't do that anymore, but that's how it was done at the time. Our first cohort of students had five, with four completing, and our second group had eight that started, with six completing. They were culturally diverse, American Indian, African American, Hispanic, Asian, and Caucasian heritage. The number of students obviously have increased with each cohort over the years. Initially, the faculty-student ratio was small, one to four or one to six. We had one full-time faculty member, and that was Dr. Carol Philman. She was dedicated solely to the BSN program. There were three full-time faculty whose primary responsibility was in the associate degree program, but each of them taught one course as an overload in the Bachelor of Science program. And they were Jan Emery, Judy Garrett, Leslie Guthrie, and I also taught one course. With that then, our BSN course program was up and running, and it definitely has continued over the years since 2002. Thank you very much. At the time that Nancy was <clears throat> developing this program, she was also a <coughs> doctoral candidate at OSU. So her husband didn't need to know where she was wandering the streets that night. <laughs> she stayed pretty busy. I even, I even developed a course for that program. All right. Um, following Mrs. Tower in the director's position were Susan Leibarger, that for some reason my computer printed out Susan Limbarger. <laughs> I don't know why it did that. Clara Murette and Nancy Deedy. The rapid transit RN to BSN program completed that career ladder program. And so graduates who wanted to broaden their scope of practice <coughs> it, it, it helped them with that uh, career decision. Dr. Robert Brown, Ph.D. from Louisiana State University and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, currently the Executive Vice President and Dean of the Faculty, will discuss how the college plans to revamp this BSN program and in doing so to meet the future needs of the community for nursing and Thank you, Dr. Smith. Well, let's talk about the future a little bit. First off, let me say as Chief Academic Officer of Baycomb College, I want to welcome all of you here today for what really is a great day at Baycomb. A lot's happened over the past decades, not only at Baycomb, but in the increased level of the needs in healthcare. According to the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, the traditional view of nurse education that's been held over the past 50 years no longer supports the health system that, and I quote, demands expanded delivery of outpatients and primary care throughout the community, greater numbers of clinical specialists to treat an array of acute and chronic illnesses, and wider use of nurse practitioners and other advanced generalists to provide citizens, especially underserved populations, more accessible and affordable care. The need is for more nursing personnel who can function with more independence in clinical decision making and case management, unquote. Therefore, the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, as well as other national organizations, such as the Institute of Medicine and the American Nurses Association, and more and more hospitals across the nation, are calling for the Bachelor of Science degree to now be the minimum educational requirement for nurses. As you've heard this morning, Bacon was a leader in nurse education by being the first higher education institution in the state to bring nurse education to a college campus. And we are now committed to being a pace setter and providing online degree nursing education. Through our regionally and nationally accredited BSN degree completion program, which Dr. Dean helped us get started here at the college. Through that program, we are implementing now what we refer to as a concierge level service to our students. This means professional faculty and staff that carefully and respectfully guide 
the students through the educational and logistical steps necessary to successfully acquire a bachelor's degree in nursing. In addition, Bacon is considered a leader in developing new online content delivery formats, such as President Duncan referred to earlier as micro-lectures embedded in our courses that provide meaningful and relevant content information delivered by highly experienced and qualified faculty. Let me be clear, our courses are not electronic correspondence courses, but instead are highly interactive learning experiences that provide registered nurses with the education they need to meet the challenges of an ever-changing healthcare environment. Our, de our degree completion program, which can be completed anywhere from within 12 to 18 months and from anywhere within this country, embraces a curriculum that addresses the needs of the United States as well as of tribal nations across this land that are going through significant changes in how they provide health care to their citizens. Most of you here this morning are aware of Bacon's very, very unique and significant mission, one of the most significant and unique in the country. And that mission, of course, being to first and foremost meet the higher education needs of American Indians. We are pleased honored and humbled by the ever-increasing number of tribal nations and tribal communities that are partnering with us in carrying out this mission. As evidence of this, I'm thrilled to announce this morning that we are finalizing agreements with the Cherokee Nation, the Muscogee Creek Nation, and the Choctaw Nation, whereby each nation will provide 25 full tuition and fee scholarships for students enrolled in programs through our Division of Adult Education, which includes our Bachelor of Science in Nursing. In addition, we already have a written agreement with the Chickasaw Nation, whereby they have agreed to provide an unlimited amount of full tuition and fee scholarships to their citizens enrolled in Bacon's DAE programs. This is a great and exciting, exciting time for Bacon, and this is exciting news, and we're channeling our efforts and these scholarships towards students that are interested in this, that in our Bachelor of Science in Nursing and our Bachelor of Science in Medical Imaging programs. This morning, we have citizens here of each of these nations, and I would like us to show our appreciation by giving them a round of applause. In closing, I want to express my appreciation and thanks to all of you this morning, especially the faculty, the administration, and graduates of our nursing program. We've made it possible for us to have produced almost 1,600 nurses over the past 50 years and allow Bacon to be a significant leader in healthcare education. I know I can speak on behalf of President Duncan, the Board of Trustees, and our current faculty and staff, that we are committed, equally committed, to keeping Bacon on the forefront of healthcare education. Thank you for being here this morning. God bless all of you, and God continue to bless Bacon College. In Ecclesiastes, we are told that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. It is fitting in the light of the current knowledge and technological explosion that the two-year program at Bacon College, the first of its kind in the state, be plucked up and replaced with a program which will serve to better meet the more complicated, diverse healthcare needs of the population. Although we want to shed a tear, but we need to move on. I'd like to recognize the committee. Putting together a program like this, although it seems simple, is not. Um, I'd like the committee members to stand as I speak their name. Peggy Parsons. <laughs> Peggy worked diligently and faithfully in bringing this day to fruition. It seems that she was everywhere every day. Thank you, Peggy. Ann Ong. Ann Ong served as the technological advisor, spending many hours on the computer and preparing the mail-outs 
and the mail outs and the mail outs to over 1,600 people. Several of these were sent several times as addresses were changed and we were trying to, to locate people. Linda Frederick. <laughs> Linda used her skills to research the graduates and try to track them down. I think we'll get her a job with the FBI. <laughs> she was doing a good job with that as was Robbie Cowan. <laughs> nursing instructors and general ed faculty and tried to track them down. Beverly Hammonds. <laughs> because at our age, we forget what we talked about from one committee meeting to the next and what was important and what was just gossip, I guess. <laughs> Anne Shackelford. <laughs> Anne was a media person working in print and broadcast media and there was a really nice section in yesterday's newspaper that I had taped to a background and I was going to bring it, well, you know, old minds don't work very well. And so it's at home on the dining room table. If you haven't seen it and you'd like to, come by the house later. <laughs> Karen Scott. Karen assembled and prepared for publication the directory. And if you haven't bought one but would like to buy one, they are available. Um, at one of the tables in the back of the room. And this was a tremendous job. Your picture's in here somewhere. <clears throat> she also gathered up the memorabilia and it helped with table decorations and everything else that needed to be done. Um, helping her was Donna Davis. And did. She secured proclamations from the governor and the mayor, and she even had the audacity to request one from the president. It just hasn't come yet. <laughs> and those are those proclamations are printed in the directory. Brenda Freeman's responsibility was promotions and anything else that needed attention. for purchasing, and I'm supposed to remind you that um, the bookstore will be open until 12 noon. There are scrolling uh, videos behind you of the classes of 1965 through 2013. They're on two screens. Past yearbooks are being uh, sold for a donation, so you might find one from your class. And there are, um, the back of the room are two bake home blankets can be used as a backdrop for pictures. And directories and lanyards are available at the back table. So if you would like to uh, see those, Judy Rebels is manning that table. So Judy, would you stand? This woman travels from Brooklyn, Maryland to attend these meetings. And she, along with Betty Walker, responsible for setting up the registration tables and getting <laughs> Catherine Bible is the current director. <laughs> Catherine is the first graduate of Baytown to assume the position of directorship. And when she doesn't have anything else to do, she's also working on a doctoral degree. It seems that just continues as people get into these positions. Um, she's also coordinating the pinning ceremony that begins at 5.30 in the chapel. The first class and other classes are invited to pin this graduating class. So if you are available and can be here, 
meet in the chapel prior to 530. Billy Taylor was always available to lend advice, to correct us when we were wrong, and assist where necessary. Susan Leibarger started out on the career, but her new career move prevented her from attending meetings, and so she uh, is here today as sort of a girl Friday. This committee began speaking twice a month, or meeting twice a month from October through December, and then after December and the holidays were over, it met once a week. So that will let you know the work that was put in to developing this program. I want to thank you to all the guest speakers. Each time I asked someone, they said, of course, I'll be there. And not one person turned me down. And I, I appreciate that. I really do. I would not be remiss if I did not salute the graduates of this program. You serve the needs of this community and you're still serving the needs of this community or communities wherever you resided and where you were needed. It was always safe for me to have a Bacon graduate taking care of my mother, my husband, or me during our many hus recent hospitalizations. I always told my students, I want to know that you're doing well because someday you'll be taking care of me. Well, that became true. And I do remember my husband, who was a horrible patient. I didn't want anyone to know we were related, but somehow the news <laughs> got out. And he would say, go get Betty Walker. Have her restart my IV. And so I'd have to go get her. <clears throat> we always knew we would receive the best of care, and we always did. Arrangements have been made for the Muskogee Trolley to stop here at 12.45 for those of you who wish to attend the commencement. It will be going to the Civic Center, or it will travel to Honor Heights Park if you'd like to go there and see the beautiful flowers in the new butterfly house, which doesn't have butterflies yet. The trolley makes a loop around the city, so you can get off and back on. But each time you get off and re-enter, the cost is a dollar and a half. Well, I just thank you for being here. This is a wonderful day, and it will be a memory for all of us to, to think about as days go by. I would like for you to stand at this time and we're being led by Sandra Turner Peters, special assistant to the president, to sing the alma mater. If we have a directory, the alma mater is. Thank you for your hands that have saved and helped heal, and for those lives that might have slipped through them. God has them. Let's sing this wonderful album on. Where the Ozark foothills slumber, there the Verda agrees, joins the Arkansas and murmurs onward to the seas. Where the air is sweet with cedar, there the mockingbird Sings a melody of praise more wonderful than words. Our beloved alma mater in our hearts enthroned. All hail to thee, our alma mater. Hail, all hail, Bacon. In den breaks and in den Hey! 